Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson looking at definite integrals. Um, certainly I know a few people have been requesting this video, um, so hopefully this helps. Um, last lesson we looked at indefinite integrals, such as indefinite integral of x squared dx, where it was indefinite because we knew when we integrated it, um, it had a plus number on the end of it or minus and we didn't know what that number was going to be. For example, if I looked at this one, it'd be x cubed over 3. Remember, we add 1 to the indice and then divide by that same number and then put plus on the end of it. That is what we call an indefinite integral or the primitive function because of this plus c. And what you'll find with our definite integrals that that plus c will be found out or it will be dealt with, I guess. Um, so let's have a look at an actual question, an example of what I mean by this. I'm going to look at x squared dx, and let's refer back in what integration and that allows us to do. I said last lesson that it allows us to find the area underneath the curve. Now I'm going to put some x values here. I'm going to put 5 and 0, and I'll explain to you what that means. So I'm going to actually draw the graph of y equals x squared. Um, I'm going to just do a, a quick sketch, doesn't have to be perfect, y equals x squared, um, put my x and y axis on there, okay. So what this is asking me to do, theoretically, it's saying when x is 0 and x is 5, between those two points, we want to find the area underneath that curve. And that's what integration will allow us to do, just like we've done with Simpson's rule and trapezoidal rule. This is a much quicker way to do it, though, thankfully. Um, so the 5 and the 0 are these x coordinates there. Okay, They're my, I guess, my limitations. Um, they're the two values that I'm looking for the area between. So how would I go ahead and do that? Well, I spoke about integration. If I integrate x squared dx, that will allow us to find the area. So let's integrate like we did above because it's the same question. So plus 1 and then divide by 3 and plus c. Okay, so this is my indefinite integral. The issue is though, and this is why this is called a definite integral, is because you see this x value here, okay, I've got a 5 and I've got a 0. I've actually got some x values to play with. So what we can do with this um, let me just move this up a little bit. It's We're looking for the area under, between these two values. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm actually going to find the um, substitute 5 into it, which finds the whole lot. I'm going to substitute 0 into it, and it just allows me to find the area between those two points. You'll see what I mean. Um, so what I'm going to do, and this is how we set it up. Okay, I'm going to set it up here. So 5 and 0, x squared dx equals. Now this is how we generally set it up. I know it's going to look strange to start with. x cubed over 3. Now that's why I've integrated it. And I'm going to put my 5 here and my 0 here. Okay, it's important you set it out this way every time. And obviously I'd probably be going down the page. I'm running out of room so I'm going across the page. What I'm now going to do, I'm going to put the 5 where the x is. Okay, and I'm going to put 5 cubed over 3. To simply substitute it, okay, and I'm going to subtract, I'm going to put the 0 in there this time, 0 cubed over 3. So if I want to find the area between these two points, what I'm actually going to do is just put the 5 in and then put the 0 in and I'm going to find the difference. Remember it's sort of doing your B minus A with Simpson's rule? It's sort of similar. Where this is your B, um, this might be your B values, these are your A values and you're doing B minus A values. Okay, generally. Um, but that's all it is. It, you integrate it and then you simply substitute into it. It's very straightforward guys. Um, so I'm going to put that in, I get 125 over 3, subtract 0, Okay, which is going to equal simply 125 over 3, which is going to equal 2. Well, 3 goes into 12 four times, 3 goes into 5 um, once, and 2 left over, so 0 0.6 recurring units. And remember, it's area, so it's units squared, or 41.67 if you wish to have it that way. Okay, that's it. 
that's pretty much it. It's a very brief introduction, I know, um, and we'll certainly be going through lots of examples to sort of help you with it. Um, the process is actually pretty straightforward once you go through it the first couple of times. All right, so first step, let's integrate. Okay, so 2x squared over 2, okay, plus x brackets 4 and 3. So I've simply integrated it, and then I've put my values 4 and 3 there. I'm now going to, before I go ahead and actually substitute, I'm just going to cross those 2's out and simplify it. So I've got x squared plus x, and then I've got 4 and 3. Now my rule says once I've done that, remember we still was doing that b minus a. We're putting the 4 in, and then we're putting the 3 in, and we're subtracting it. So I'm going to put in here, we get 4 squared plus 4, minus 3 squared plus 3 which is going to leave me with 16 plus 4 which is 20 and it's going to leave me with 9 plus 3 which is 12 which gives me a final answer of 8 units squared okay and that basically if you think about a graph of 2x plus 1 that's one there that's what it's looking for it's been looking um, between the points 3 and 4 let's say that's 3 and let's say that's 4, it's finding me that area underneath that graph there. And it is quite important, if you can get the habit of starting to sketch these graphs, because certainly on some more challenging questions, that is a very um, a, a good habit to get into, being able to do that. But again, all I've done there, my first step was integrated it, my second step was substitute the 4, substitute the 3, and basically bang into your calculator and your job done. All right, next one. I guess the hardest part, to be honest with you, is going to be your integration part. Um, 3x squared. Okay, so we've got 3x cubed over 3, 5 and 0. And just in hindsight, guys, what I, I didn't do, and I might just quickly go back. Oh, my apologies. Oh, actually, I'll do it with this one. Something I didn't really explain, um, and that's where the plus C has gone. And you'll notice that. I, I apologize for not mentioning about the plus C. Um, let's look at it on this question. If I do my 3x cubed over 3 and I actually put on my plus C. Okay, if I do that there, right? The 3's obviously cancel, and I'm left with x cubed plus C. And the same thing would happen, okay? So let's substitute it into it as we normally would. So I'm going to put 5 cubed plus C in my first bracket, subtract. 0 cubed plus C, oops, plus C, equals 125 plus C minus 0 plus C is a C. What do you notice about your C's? C, take away C, is 0. You're just left with 125 units squared. Now, the reason I didn't put the C in that previous question is I already knew that those C's were going to cancel. That will happen every single time. So that's why you don't need to put the C's in. If I go back to that last question, okay, and I actually put, plus, oops, my apologies. If I actually put a plus C, I'll do it in, um, in blue. If I put a plus C there, Okay, and a plus C there, and I put a plus C and a plus C. You'll notice I've got C, take away C, they will cancel each other out. Okay, so that's, I did fail to mention that, so I do apologize. But again, that's why I haven't put the C in there originally, because, you know, I could put it there, but because we know that they're going to subtract out at the end of it, there's no need to put the plus c into it okay and again that's why it's uh, you know another reason it's called a definite integral because there is no c there's no constant it's disappeared it's gone it's been dealt with okay which is a great thing um so apologies i forgot about that okay um have a crack at this one so pause it and see what we can come up with Alrighty. so we've got minus 3x cubed over 3 plus c i'm not going to bother putting it there though I'm going to put my x values of 2 and 0. Um, I'm just going to simplify this a little bit. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So I've got negative x cubed and then got my 2 and 0. So that's my um, integration part. Let's now substitute into it. So I'm going to have negative 2 cubed minus, 
Uh, let's put those brackets in there just in case. Negative 0 cubed. Okay, well, 2 cubed is going to be 8. So I've got negative 8. Minus nothing is nothing. Units squared. So again, that's a pretty straightforward question. Um, again, you know, if I sketched it out just to see what it's going to look like, it's a negative um, 3x squared. So it'll be a bit of a thinner negative x squared graph, I guess. Um, and if I'm looking for the point 0 and 2, you know, 0 obviously is going to be there. And then let's say 1 and 2. So what am I, I'm actually looking for is this area between that part there. Okay, just again, putting a bit of relation to what we are doing. All right, now, the last question, and this is going to be a bit of a doozy. Okay, I want you to have a go at it, and then I want you to see why this is an interesting question. Okay, I look forward to seeing you in a moment. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you figured out that something went amiss in that question. And let's see what that may have been. I'm going to do it exactly as I've been doing it before. x to the power of 4 over 4 plus c. Don't have to put it there. I'm going to put my 1 and my negative 1. Um, okay, so let's substitute into it. We're going to have 1 to the power of 4. Yeah, that's just 1 over 4. Okay, minus. And then negative 1 to the power of 4. Well, that's just 1 over 4. So I've got a quarter minus a quarter, which leaves me with 0 units squared. Do you see what's wrong with that? How is it possible to have an area of 0? <laughs> okay, so it's kind of not right. Um, although for our purposes it probably is, because we haven't done this before, we've got no other way or option to go. I did mention to you before that it's very important that if you can get the habit of sketching your graphs whenever you're finding area, please believe me when I say it makes life a lot easier for you. Again, it's a quick sketch, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so I'm just going to sort of draw a fairly rubbish looking um, cubic graph. Okay, so what we're looking at is finding the area between negative 1, so let's say that point there, and then positive 1 that point there. So I guess if I use orange, what we're looking for is this area here and this area here. Now, I've got two lots of areas there. You can see on either side of that uh, x-axis. Obviously, that can't give me an answer of zero because we can clearly send the orange that there is area there. So why do you think it's come up with zero? Well, hopefully you've recognized that the area in here is one quarter units squared which is the same as over here so realistically what it should be is this a quarter plus a quarter which equals a half units squared that should be the correct answer okay not zero so what happens unfortunately you know if we find the area underneath this curve here and it actually gives me a negative area and that will often happen obviously that can't be right, so we take the absolute value of that. Um, and so this is a style of question which is much more challenging because what we actually do, we we break up in two sections. We'll often break it up into, unless we know it's, it, it's going to be exactly the same. Like in that case, because one and negative one, I know that they're going to reflect each other. They're going to be the same. I could just find the um, the area between one and zero, for example, x cubed dx. And I could actually then simply times that by 2 because I know they're going to be the same. But if I'm not sure, often what we would do is this. Okay, now this is going to a bit of advanced stuff which we'll be going through next lesson. Um, I'd actually get do the area between 1 and 0 of x cubed dx. And I'd do the area between 0 and negative 1 x squared dx. And I'd make sure that I take the absolute value of that particular area because that's going to be in it coming for some reason or comes up as like a negative a quarter which we want to be a quarter um, but again we haven't done that just yet that's where we're going with this stuff that's why it's important I believe guys if you get in the habit I know it's hard for some of the graphs it is definitely hard but if you can get the habit of trying to sketch your graph each time 
please believe me when I say it's going to get you out of trouble a little bit because certainly the harder questions, they will stump you on this, all right? And it's much easier if you can see what's going on visually. Okay, very important. Um, okay, what I want you to do, make sure if you haven't done so already, um, please go on to exercise 3.4. That's of the red book. Okay, I think it's on page 100 if I remember correctly. I shouldn't say that. It's in front of me, so I know it's page 100. Um, but have a got those questions. Very important you start having a work on those, on those stuff. But please, um, for the most part, if you can sketch it, please try. Some of them will be a bit hard. But certainly if you can try to get in the habit of sketching it, it just makes life a lot easier. All right, have a great day, guys. Hopefully this was of benefit.